Today we're going to talk about how to work with time in Unity. In this tutorial, I will show you how to build a countdown timer as well as how to build a simple stopwatch that you can start and pause using a UI button. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. In order to display our timer, we're going to need to set up a text field. So let's go ahead and right click and under UI, let's select text. Unity is automatically going to create a canvas for your text field, but don't worry about that for now. We will cover setting up a canvas in another video. Instead, let's just go ahead and change the font color to white so that we can see our text on our scene. For now, let's just center our text field by holding the option key and clicking the center icon. Then let's set the vertical and horizontal align to center. And let's increase our font size so it's nice and large on our screen. And just for fun, I'm going to import a Google font called Press Start. I can do this by downloading the font from their website and then going ahead and dragging it into Unity. Once it's imported, I should be able to select it as a font in the inspector. Now that we have our text box set up, let's create a script on our camera's game object and let's call this countdown. This next step is really important. Make sure at the top of your script, you include unityengine.ui. If you forget this line, you'll get an error when you try to change the text in the text box. Then let's go ahead and create a new public float called time start. We will use this to tell our timer how many seconds we like to count down from. Let's just default it to 60 for now. Then let's create a new public text and let's label this text box. This will hold our text box game object. So then in our start function, let's set our text box's text to equal our time start value. Since the time start value is a float, we need to convert it into a string. We can do this using dot to string. Now let's go into our update function and modify time start to subtract its current value by time dot delta time. In a lot of my scripts, I've referenced time dot delta time, so I figured I would go over what exactly this is. Currently our update function is run once per frame. So a game that runs at exactly 60 frames per second would be called 60 times in a second. Unfortunately, this can sometimes vary and change. So Unity created time.deltaTime, which keeps track of how much time in seconds it took to complete the last frame. Oftentimes you'll multiply time.deltaTime to keep objects moving at the same rate over time. But for this tutorial, we want to subtract by time.deltaTime to keep our countdown consistent with time itself instead of our frame rate. So now that we have our time value staying consistent with time, let's go ahead and update our text box text. And then to clean up our time value, let's just quickly round off our time start float to keep our value at just an integer using math.round. Now let's just go ahead and save our script and return back to Unity. If we select our camera's game object, we should see our script in the inspector. Let's make sure to drag our text box into the text box field in our inspector so our script knows which text box to edit in our scene. And then if we press play, we should see our text box updates to our time start value and the number decreases every second. This is cool if you want the timer to count down, but let me show you how you can adjust the code so it counts up like a stopwatch. I'll quickly jump to a second scene where I have another text field for my timer and a button to start my stopwatch. Let's go ahead and create a new c -sharp script on our camera's game object and let's label this stopwatch. Just like in our previous script, be sure to include unityengine.ui. 
and also time start and a public field for our text box. Again, let's set up our default text box to default to our time start value, but this time let's change to string so that it allows for two decimal points. Our update function is also the same, except this time instead of subtracting time.delta time, we are adding time.delta time. If we then go ahead and save this, and then drag our text field over into our inspector, we should see an incrementing timer when we press play. I thought it would be fun to control our timer using our UI button, so let's go back into Unity and set that up. The first thing we need to do is create a boolean to keep track of whether or not our timer is running. Let's label this timer active. And then let's wrap the code in our update function to only run if our timer active boolean is set to true. Next, we need to create a function that our button can declare when it's pressed. So let's create a public void called timer button. Then let's just set timer active to equal the opposite value of itself. The exclamation point negates a value, so we are essentially saying if timer active is true, set it to false, and vice versa. So then if we go back into Unity and select our button, we can add our timer button function to our onClick parameter. So now if we press play, we should be able to start and pause our timer using our UI button. Now this is pretty cool, but it's not perfect yet. I want our button to change so that instead of saying start, it says pause when our timer is running. We can do that pretty easily by going back into our script and creating a new public text reference for our start button text box. And let's just call this start button text. Then in our timer button function, let's add a new line and let's set start button text to equal one of two things. If timer active is true, we want our text to say pause. And if it's false, we want to say start. We can write this argument in one line by using a question mark and a colon. The first statement is if it's true, and the second is if it's false. Now all we need to do is drag our button's text box into our camera's game objects inspector. When we press play, we have a simple stopwatch that is interactive using a UI button in Unity. If you found this tutorial useful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one.